In my metal fabrication business, I often have the need to make near-perfect circles out of sheet metal or plating. So I came up with this little machine here to do that for me. And since I made this before I was making YouTube videos, this video is just simply going to be a walk around of how it works. This machine currently resides in my 12 foot enclosed trailer. Not because I need to take it with me on site very often, but because I don't need it in the shop. And this 12 foot enclosed trailer provides an area that's out of the elements. So the basic construction of it is I put two channel iron back to back to make kind of an I-beam with this movable pedestal on it that holds my plasma cutter up here. It's simply held in place by a little bungee cord. There's simply a hole drilled in that that fits around the nozzle of the plasma cutter and a U-sheet piece that kind of cups the nozzle a little bit better, cups the whole entire torch. And a little notched piece back here that holds the handle. And then the bungee cord simply gets pulled over and locked on. And that simply connects to a piece of square tubing inside a piece of square tubing here. That makes it adjustable for height. And then this square tubing that holds the torch is adjustable so you can uh, set your diameter of your piece. And then this piece adjusts so you can keep your torch as close to this column as possible. Like you can move this entire column in if you're cutting small pieces or if you're cutting a really big piece, you know, you want the entire column clear back here. And that all slides on these two pieces of channel iron that I put back to back to make an I-beam. Up here, what you call the heart of the unit, I have an inch and a quarter shaft with a three inch plate pressed onto it. That plate helps deflect a lot of junk from getting into the bearing down here. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have gone quite a bit bigger with this plate. Also, it doesn't need to be inch and a quarter bearings, so I probably would have put in a smaller shaft. There is a magnet pressed in there, and I drilled a hole over here that I stick the air nozzle in to blow that magnet back out when I need to change it because that magnet does get hot and lose its ability to hold, you know, loses its strength. For most things, that magnet holds really, really strong on there. But sometimes you need more holding power than that. So I machined this adapter that presses down on the shaft. It's a really tight fit. Actually, yeah, it'll go. Let's say the shaft's a little bit dirty. It's going to have a hard time going. There is an Allen screw in it to lock it down if you want. I never do, though. It fits tight enough that just by pushing it on there, we're good to go. And honestly, I think that magnet holds it down a little bit, even though this has a hole clear through it. But anyway, that's a threaded hole for a half-inch bolt. I have also made a couple very specific washers, like this one that's on here is machined a specific size. This one has a step in it. It is machined to a specific size. That way, if I have things that have a bigger hole in them than the half-inch bolt, it will still stay centered on there. I have actually never finished this machine and I have intentions of just building a new one because I've got lots of design changes I want to do. And one of the things I want to change is I used a 12 volt window regulator motor to power the unit and I would like to make that a stepper motor. Matter of fact, when I built this machine, I actually got a stepper motor to put on here, but I ran out of time. I had to do a whole batch of circles. So I just grabbed this 12 volt window regulator motor and went with it. Matter of fact, the job I was doing, I didn't have this cute little voltage regulator. Well, regulator is not the correct word. Um, this is actually just a lamp dimmer switch that I wired to a 110 volt outlet because I have a 110 volt to 12 volt power converter here. So that changes the 110 volt going into that power converter which then changes the voltage coming out, which then changes the voltage going into the window regulator motor, which then slows it down. 
So, yes, I was going to use a stepper, ran out of time, slap that on there. I'm going to get back to using a stepper on that. I am also going to put bearings on here and a stepper up here so I can control the diameter as I'm cutting. For the ground, I played with all sorts of complicated things and I ended up just sticking the ground clamp of the plasma cutter on the shaft and it works great. So that's what I do. <laughs> well, I think that's enough talking about it. So let's see it in action. As you can see, I can go from a creep up to pretty fast. And I have pretty good control of it. For some reason the machine kind of got the shakes. I think the ground clamp is hanging up a little bit. And I guarantee you on camera it looks far worse than it does in real life. But almost no dross. I mean look at that. I'm going to do one more cut because I need to cut the center of this thing out. So I'll give you a top view of that cut. That is a really good cut. And there's the part we just made. It's actually for a spare tire holder for a customer. But there you go. That's a walk around. A little explanation of how my circle cutter machine works. Thanks for watching y'all. Hope you enjoyed it.